you're in the um, satellite session um, sponsored by Omron, and it's called the Screening for Hypertension and Atrial Fibrillation, Time to Act Now. My name is Ben Friedman. I'll just introduce the, the talks. This is the uh, slide of my um, declarations. You'll notice it includes BMS and Pfizer and Omron. So what we're going to do today is I will give a brief introduction about why AF is bad when it's combined with hypertension. Then uh, Professor Altus Guda will be talking about screening for both in one go, a no-brainer. Professor Renato Schnabel will be talking about changing the game for new AF initiatives. And I will come back to you on the pulse wave, a new footprint for AF detection. So the very first talk I'm going to give is just a, a starter to tell you why atrial fibrillation and hypertension are dangerous bedfellows when they occur together. First of all, hypertension is the leading modifiable cause for and risk factor for the global vascular disease burden. It's the most important modifiable risk factor for developing atrial fibrillation. And this has been shown in various studies to be likely causal. We need to consider hypertension as not just a comorbidity, but a target for prevention and detection of atrial fibrillation. Because they both additively increase the risk of stroke and dementia, and because they're both frequently unknown or inadequately treated, we have a gap that we would like to try and fill. They are two of the most modifiable, important risk factors for stroke, atrial fibrillation and hypertension. Both are common and easy to detect by opportunistic screening. And we can detect both at the same time as we'll hear. They're easy to treat, effective therapy that reduces stroke. They frequently occur together and additively increase the risk. You can screen for AF by pulse palpation or by BP oscillometry or by phosphoprothysmogram or PPG in smartwatches, for example. And these mostly detect atrial fibrillation by irregularity. There's the ECG, of course, which is the gold standard, no P waves and irregularity of the R waves. But there are multiple new ways to do this with new devices and new tech artificial intelligence machine learning. The ECG is still required for diagnosis in all of the guidelines, including the most recently. And it needs to be read by a health professional. So if you want to make the definitive diagnosis, you need an ECG. This is how screening used to be done in the days when doctors used to take your pulse and check your blood pressure with a sphygmomanometer, in which case it would have been easy to detect atrial fibrillation because of the irregularity. But asymptomatic AF presentation is a proxy for what, a proxy for what you might de determine if you screened opportunistically for AF. And a number of registry studies and cohort studies show that it's actually high risk they show it's the same or worse risk as the symptomatic presentations. This was our own study, and you can see the top line is atrial fibrillation detected incidentally in the absence of symptoms in general practice. And in the red line, you can see here, um, it also, um, is high risk, but not even as high as the asymptomatic presentation. And the dotted line at the bottom is no AF. In the study in Hong Kong, there was 11,000 patients that were screened opportunistically for atrial fibrillation during an observation by a nurse in the clinic. And we found lots of patients with AF which was clinically known and a large number of AF which was not known 
And then we looked at what the stroke rate was over the next two to three years. What we found was that AF was not very well treated. Only 30% or a bit less were treated with oral anticoagulants. And here you see on the left-hand side, in the green, is the stroke rate over about three years, 6% over three years if you don't treat it in green. At the bottom, you can see people without AF. However, if you treat the AF, clinically diagnosed or by screening, you can reduce that risk. So the take home message from this is if you pick it up opportunistically, it's high risk and it behaves in the same way as known AF that's clinically detected. But you can prevent stroke with oral anticoagulants. Um, and opportunistic single-time screening is still recommended for people aged over 65, and they have a 2% stroke rate per year, so we should screen and we should treat. Thanks very much. We're going to move straight on now to the next presentation by Dr. Uh, Alter Scooter, and then we'll come back to some questions and answers at the end. Bye.